Hey guys, it's Drew here. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to be going over the Nuzlocker guide for PK Hex. What tools are in PK Hex, how to use it, and why it's useful. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe. I'm currently doing Emerald Kaizo. We have seven badges and a hardcore Nuzlocke. And I'm also doing a vintage white hardcore deathless Nuzlocke on my Twitch account. It's going to be linked in the description. So this is the website for PK Hex. I'll leave this in the description. Basically, just click this download button and then save it into a folder or on your desktop. And then also, this is important, this is the save file types. I'll go over the most popular ones. So let's go over what PK Hex is. If you want to go to a specific section, there's going to be timestamps uh, in the description of the video that you can scroll through. But basically, let's go over the basics. Basically, PK Hex is a save editing tool used to edit uh, certain aspects of your game. Now there's a lot here, but uh, I'll give you the quick rundown. So let's open one of our saves. This is Vintage White. So this is my Vintage White uh, save. Uh, this attempt to actually die, funny enough. But basically, let's go over what everything in here is. Uh, so in order to find your save, you're gonna wanna go to File, Open, and you're gonna want to do some specific stuff depending on what kind of uh, game you're playing, whether it's GBA, DS, or 3DS. Um, basically, if you're playing DS, you have to export a save. So let's go over how to do that. Basically, so you want to open your Desmume or any other emulator that you're using for DS games. In order to get your save, you want to go to File, Export, Backup Memory, and then you're going to want to save it as something like that. And then I already have it saved as one here, but you save it here, uh, make sure it's a raw save file. Uh, and quick note, it has to be a .save format. If you're just using save states and then you export your save, it's not gonna work. So what you need to do is you need to save your game and then export it. So quick note, if you try to export your save and it cannot save as a .save file, you can actually convert the DSV file or whatever the issue is uh, into a .save file from here in Pokey Generator. Basically, you'll open your DSV file in here, and then you'll save file as right here. I'll also link some other uh, resources uh, to, to try to help uh, that issue if you have that. So that's for DS hacks. Now, if you want to do this for GBA hacks, you have to open uh, the save created when you save the game itself. So let's go to Emerald Kaizo. It this doesn't matter if it's Emerald Kaizo. It could be any GBA ROM hack, um, any GBA game. Now keep in mind, some ROM hacks like Radical Red and Inclement Emerald are were created in a way to where they don't actually work in PK Hex. But if you want some items like rare candies and some thief items and some other quality of life stuff, I will have a patch linked in the description for those two games. If I see any other ones, I might link them there too but basically if you want uh some stuff that you would get from pk hex uh for those games uh it'll be linked in the description because they don't work in pk hex uh there's a lot of stuff in this folder but basically in order to open in pk hex what you want to do is open your game so this is my gba file and what you want to do is you want to go here and save and then after you save it will create this file right here, the, the .save file. It will be the exact same name as your GBA game. And then this is what you're going to open right here. So let's go File, Open, World Kaizo. And it will be right here. It will be the same name as the GBA file. And then there it is. Quick note on the 3DS hacks. It might be a little tricky to find where the actual save is. But I'll go over how to find your saved data so you can export it into PK Hex. So basically, 3DS is a little different. Basically, uh, on the title screen, before you actually open your game, you should see your game here uh, after you locate uh, the file location of your game. Basically, in order to access the saved data, you want to go right click, open save data location, and then the main will be right here. This is Prismatic Moon, by the way. So you're just going to want to drag this into PK Hex, and then you have your game. You make the same edits as before, and then you go export main right here, and then you got to make sure it's a save file. So this is very important. This is very, very important. 
basically, if you want to use PK hex for ROM hacks, you have to do this in a very specific way if you plan on editing your Pokemon, whether it be edging, giving them an item, making them shiny, anything like that. We need to do a specific thing. Basically, if you see my folder, we have PK hacks. Uh, EK hacks is just for Emerald Kaiser. You need PK hacks. In order to do this, what you need to do is you need to go right click, new text document, and you need to have it in the same file location as PK hacks. So there's a tutorial on how to uh, get to make PK hacks. I'll go over it here, but I'll link this in the description if you want it. So basically, you go new text file, and then you want to name it pkhacks.txt. Press enter, and then you want to open this, and you want to name it start PK hex hacks exit zero, and then you go file, save as PK hacks dot bat, and then save. So I already have it here, but I'm going to replace it, and there you go. Now, when you open pkhacks.bat, it will run pkhex in the hacked mode. Now, this is why this is important. Basically, if you use just pkhex for a ROM hack, when you edit a Pokemon, let's say we do this, make it like level 28, and then set it. If I do that in pkhex, it will reverse the stat, type, ability, and move changes made to the Pokemon. So that's why you need PK hex so that stuff doesn't get edited. But other than that, P PK hacks should be the exact same thing, so you can just run PK hacks every time. So there's a few tips and tricks that uh, I want to share with you guys. So the first one is going to be edging. Basically, the way you edge your Pokemon, and basically what edging means is you go into a gym leader or any fight. Um, if you're playing with level caps, you cannot go over that level cap before you start the gym leader's fight. In order to level up during the fight, you want to get to very close to the next level so that when you kill one of the Pokemon, you level up mid-fight. It's very useful. Now, the way to do this is you have to look at the EXP and the level. Let's say the level cap is 28. I'm bringing my Mantine to a gym fight, and the level cap is 28. Basically, what I can do is, if I go to level 29, and then I subtract one XP point from the total XP. It'll now be 28.99999, basically one EXP point away. So you can go ahead and, and set that. And then now the Mantine is going to be leveling up after one Pokemon KO in the fight. Also, something very important is when you're making these edits to Pokemon and you're setting them, make sure you're only editing in the box because for some reason, if you edit in the party, it'll reverse the the changes made in the ROM hack, even though you're in PK hacks. It'll do the same thing as if you're in PK hacks, so just make sure you're editing in the box. So basically, let's go over what all this means. Uh, basically, you can make your Pokemon shiny here. You can re-roll the PID. Uh, it doesn't matter too much, uh, but if you want the shiny, you click the shiny button right there. You can change the nickname. This is the total EXP. This is the level that you're at. Uh, the EXP will change depending on your level, obviously, because if you gain more EXP, you'll be higher level. Uh, it changes the nature, uh, the form is only for specific mons, the held item, the ability, your friendship, you can make it an egg if you want. Um, the met location isn't like too crucial, you can mess with that. The stats, uh, if you wanna, if you're playing a ROM hack with EVs and there's like an EV trainer, uh, you can do this to make it faster. You can randomize the stuff too, this is just for contests. Change your hidden power if you want. The attacks, you can change your attacks if you want. You can give yourself PP ups. Uh, this is really big if you're playing for a normal game. Uh, basically, if you want to make your Pokemon legal, you'll want to change your OT to the name of your trainer. And then make sure you know your trainer ID, your SID. Basically, if you want to know this, you can go to a mod in your existing game. Let's say you're playing Pokemon Sword or Shield. Uh, basically, you just like tap on a different Pokemon, 
and then you check this, check this, copy it into the Pokemon that you're putting into your game, make sure you have the same motif. So there's tools, there's show, there's the showdown tab. Uh, this is very important if you're going to use the damage calculator. I'll go, I'll have a whole video on how to use the damage calculator for Nuzlocking soon, but uh, basically this is very nice. Uh, you could export this Stantler, for example, to the clipboard, and it has all my stats, has my ability, the level, the nature, and the moves. It's very useful. And you can just go into Showdown and paste that in. I'll just go over that real quick. So we're in the Showdown, and then you just paste it there, import, and then now you have it for damage calcing. Then the Options tab, there's not much here. Uh, this, the default settings should always be uh, good enough. But uh, you can mess with this if you if you want. It's mainly for legality sakes. So basically, these tabs you got your box, uh, your PC, you got your party Pokemon. Uh, the other doesn't really make a big difference. Battle box daycare. Uh, this is for DS. It might look different for other hacks. Uh, and then save. Um, you can save the entire box. This is only relevant if you're really using this for normal games. Uh, block data doesn't really matter. In Gen 5, you can actually get some unreleased or like unavailable wallpapers. Event flags aren't like a big deal, but if you can, if you want to give yourself running shoes like right at the start or something like that, you can. Uh, the items tab is big. Basically, this is how you're gonna get rare candies, max repels, thief items, all that. Basically, what I would suggest is if you do like playing with rare candies, you can go to your medicine tab. If you're playing Gen 3, I believe it's just gonna be in your normal bag. Uh, but you can just type in rare candies and then give yourself uh, unlimited amount. Um, you can also give yourself some max repels if you want to just repel through uh, grass and whatnot. Uh, you can also give yourself full restores so you save a trip to the Pokemon Center or max elixirs as well. Another big thing I like putting in here is thief items, the items that I would get from thiefing a Pokemon, but to save time, I would just hack them in. Basically, in order to find what items you can thief, I'll link a website down below. So basically, there are a lot of websites to tell you what exactly uh, are the wild Pokemon held items. If it's not changed in the game, it should just be one of these websites. Uh, basically, there's Black and White, uh, Diamond Pearl, uh, Sun and Moon, Sword Shield, Brilliant Diamond, Shiny Pearl. I'll link all these in the description. Uh, basically, if you want to find a certain berry, let's say I want a Chilin berry, you can see if there's any wild uh, encounters for a Rattata, and you can get a Chilin berry. But basically, you'll want to control F, uh, find the wild Pokemon, and see if you can uh, thief the item out there. I would suggest looking at the change log uh, for ROM hacks, see if the wild Pokemon held items are updated to a certain game. Like I know Renegade Platinum is updated to Sun and Moon. When you're done editing the bag, you can press save. So there's some other tabs here. There's the mailbox, the misc items, and the mystery gift if you want to play around with those. Uh, there's also the Pokedex if you want to give yourself a national dex uh, for post-game reasons or something else you want to do. So then there's the trainer info TM. The big stuff here is the money tab, which you can give yourself unlimited money if you want to, in my opinion, if you have the thief TM or you have something like pickup to give you unlimited uh, items to sell. Uh, there's also BP to skip uh, the battle subway training, so you can mess around with that if you want. And then once you're done with all these uh, save edits, you want to put this back into your game. So basically, you're gonna go file, export, export main, save it as a .save file, save it here, then you go file, import backup memory, and then go to the file that you just exported from PK Hex. Do this, this doesn't really matter, you just press OK, and there you go. And it's 28, almost at level cap. So that just about sums up how to use PK Hex for ROM hacks, uh, normal games, or anything like that. Uh, if you do like this video, make sure to subscribe. Uh, also, follow me on Twitch. We're doing Emerald Kaizo and Vintage White Hardcore Deathless Nuzlocke. If you have any questions whatsoever, drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer everyone. Also, comment below if you want to see another tutorial about anything Pokemon related. And thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.